that looks uh, good there, I think. Yep. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, so you know that this discussion, this talk, this presentation is going to be about a Swiss Army knife health solution. So we say Swiss Army knife, and you'll see why I use that term shortly, because it does so many different things. It's hard to believe that one technology can do all of that, but it does. And so we'll go through that and show you how. So are you looking for a new health solution that's better, that's different, that's outside the box, it's not toxic, it's not a drug, it's non-surgical, has lots of proof, has a very long history of use, about 50 years of use at least. And it's not supported by any mega business, like a pharmaceutical company or uh, other major corporation. Well, this is right at the end of your vision, your view, your camera. So let's dive in. So how about a Swiss Army Life Health solution that does so many things, it may get you out of many, many pickles. Unfortunately, these are rather hot. So you could ha have some pretty hot pickles to get out of. So how about a single solution that you can do all of these things? It can do acupuncture stimulation. It can help with infections of different kinds. It thins the blood. So basically acts as an anticoagulant. It reduces swelling in the body, anywhere in the body. It, it helps with any inflammation, relaxes muscles, makes ATP and fixes mitochondria, helps cells live longer, improves body rhythms, increases circulation, rebuilds soft tissue, including collagen, detoxifies, increases growth factors, increases nitric oxide, heals faster and better. And then it balances immunity, it quiets and rebuilds nerves, improves oxygen supply and delivery, reduces, eliminates pain, many brain benefits, improves psychological and cognitive function and sleep, and it, it makes for better red blood cells and functions, red blood cell functions. It improves skin health and healing, stem cell stimulation, stress management, tissue healing and regeneration, and many actions on water. It even acts on uh, cannabis receptors in our bodies, which we all have, and in, increases tissue energy movement. So in other words, movement of energy in the body. So let me put my um, pointer here. Okay, so next is the Swiss Army Knife Health Solution works by energetically impacting every cell in the body. Out of the 30, 37 trillion cells in your body, 96 million of them die every minute. But luckily, 96 million new cells are created every minute. To do, th to do this, there has to be a very efficient process in the body. It takes about two hours for each cell to divide into two cells two hours for each cell to divide into two cells. So that means uh, all the divisions, all the cell replacement is happening on a continuous basis in the body. So the body is a very busy place. So the body replaces about 330 billion cells per day, Quite more than 3.8 million new cells per second, which amounts to about 80 grams or 2.8 ounces, almost three ounces of cell replacement every single day. And the cell turnover, most of that cell turnover is red blood cells and neutrophils. 12% of that turnover is GI cells, gastric, gastrointestinal tract cells. Only about 1% are skin cells. And then about 0.1% each are the uh, lining of the blood vessels and the lungs. By mass, by, by, by sheer uh, uh, weight, 49% are red cells, 41% are, again, GI cells, 4% are skin cells, and 4% are fat cells. So not all the cells, we have a, a sense that the cells are, all the cells in the body are turning over, but this is not true. Only certain cells turn over uh, again, most rapidly and most efficiently. Now there are different stages of growth of body parts. So our hair grows about 0.35 millimeters per day. Our brain about every 20 to 30 years. So the replacement of the brain cells is very, very slow. Eyes stop replacing themselves once you're born. Uh, the teeth stop replacing at about age 12. And I think we all know that. Uh, lungs replace about every 15 years. The heart stops growing about every 10 years. Uh, it starts, it starts, uh, stops growing at about 10 years of age. The liver is replaced every year, essentially. The lining of the blood vessels are replaced every uh, three to four months. The intestinal tract 
largely is replaced every five days. And the fat in the body, inside the belly of the body is replaced about every 10 years. So all of this relates to what we call the cell theory. So all living things are com composed of one or more cells and they're the organism's basic units of structure and function. Cells come only from existing cells. In other words, you don't get new cells coming from the blue. Uh, like, and even the body is made from existing cells, an egg and a sperm combining. Each cell maintains homeostasis at the cellular level. Each cell has its own functions and processes at the cellular level that happen per every second to maintain its uh, status and, and um, its natural state of function. So homeostasis at the level of the tissue, organ, organ system, and organism reflects the combined and coordinated actions of billions of cells. A lot of work has to be done to maintain the cells of the body, which then maintain the tissues of the body and then the organs of the body. So cells are often called the microscopic building blocks of the body. They're active, dynamic, and continually grow, specialize, function, die, and replenish themselves by the millions every second. All right, and there are about 226 different kinds of cells in the body. This, each cell has within it an organelle, another little organ, if you will, within inside the cell. And these organelles have many, many functions. So the, the cell itself has a large number of organelles to do the work that needs to be done to maintain that tiny little cell. And as I said, the cells are different across the body and all the different tissues of the body. So the cell is the basic functional unit. We, we mentioned that already. Cells are considered um, basically the, the basic functional unit. That's important because magnetic field therapy works at this basic cellular level. Now cells are extremely tiny. They're about 0 0.01 millimeters or about four ten thousandths of an inch across. A six micron diameter car carbon filament above uh, a 50 micron diameter human hair. So the human hair is much bigger in diameter than a typical cell. So here's another example of cell sizes. Atoms are 0.1 nanometers. Amino acids, nanometers. Proteins, nanometers. Viruses, nanometers, 100 nanometers. Um, a chloroplast is a, a, another component of the organelle. Uh, organelles of the cell are about one micrometer. Plant, bacteria, plant cells, human eggs, range between um, like 10 to 100 micrometers. And a, a frog egg is about a millimeter. An ant is about a centimeter. Mouse is, a, is 0.1 to the tenth of a meter. And then a human is about a meter long and so on. So this slide says, this uh, fly said, hey bug on my back, are you a mite? And the, and the mite says, I might be. Stupidest pun I ever heard. What do you expect? I just made it up on the fly. Sorry about that. All right, so more than half your body is not human. Human cells make up only 43% of the body's total cell count. The rest, about 57% are microscopic colonists called our microbiome. There are over 400 species of bacteria in the microbiome. They're essential to your health. So your body isn't just you, right? It includes the microbiome. And that the microbiome is a cooperative sym symbiotic relationship to, uh, to us as well. And it includes bacteria, viruses, fungi, uh, organisms cl classified as um, like bacteria, but they're not bacteria. And the greatest concentration of this microscopic life is in the dark murky depths of our uh, bowels. But we have huge amounts of bacteria also even on our skin, 30, 30 a billion cells on our skins, for example. So in the average adult, there are 37 trillion cells we mentioned and 49 trillion microbes. At best, you are a little more than 40% you. We're all just Petri dishes with shoes. You're supposed to laugh at that. All right, and maybe I, I'm sorry I can't hear you, but that, hopefully it was a good laugh. Anyway, our bodies are not 100% efficient as well. Even though we have all this activity, we have all these cells, there's a huge amount of work going on in the body per second but our bodies are not 100% efficient at converting food energy into mechanical output. So in other words, we use food to be able to make our bodies work. So our bodies are only about 25% efficiency, but consider that cars are about 20% efficiency, efficient. So we are only about 25% efficient 
in the way our bodies are functioning. Another example is an Iowa cornfield is about 1.5% efficient at converting sunlight into chemical or potential energy uh, and, and storage. So what about the metabolic rate? So the basic energy of the body is basically rated through the basic metabolic rate. This is what the metabolism of the body produces the basic metabolic rate. So by 75% of the energy for the BMR, basic metabolic rate, goes to support basic functions of the body. 25% of all basal metabolic energy consumed by the body is used to maintain electrical potentials. So a key point of this presentation is that the body is an electromagnetic organism, that the body is an energetic organism, okay? And then it uses a lot of power. So about 23 watts of power at rest for the liver and spleen, the brain is about 16, muscles are about 15, and then kidneys, heart, and others, et cetera. So the percentage of BMR that's, percentage of BMR that's used um, of the total BMR for the body is liver and spleen. 19% for the brain, 18% for muscle. So that's surprising. Most, most of us would have thought, well, maybe it's the brain or maybe it's the heart, et cetera. But liver and spleen actually use mo most of the BMR. So the energy input, chemical energy input, food input, is the intake that creates, that makes the body work. However, there's a lot of loss during that intake, which is why we're inefficient into entropy. So the loss of energy into what's called entropy. And then the body, uh, the work of the body has to, because of the work of the body creates heat. So that's thermal energy. That heat inside the body is used to maintain the body temperature. And the maintenance of the body temperature is critical to the basic functioning of the body. Chemical processes that don't get the right temperature to work within, that environment to work within, don't function properly, and they become sluggish and inefficient and ineffective, in, in, in fact. And then that's thermal energy. So the thermal energy is used in the body then to uh, maintain a lot of our processes. So that fuel, the intake, the chemical potential energy makes the body work, and then you have output. And the output is a kinetic energy, motion but it's also used that potential energy is used for growth and repair, nerve function, cellular metabolism, and then for storage purposes for future use. So chemical potential energy is actually a form of electric potential energy. You have to think of it that way. It comes in as chemical potential energy, but its primary function is to produce electrical potential energy. Unfortunately, as I said, all this, these processes are not efficient. So as a result of entropy and inefficiency, aging is inevitable. Inevitable. I, we don't want to believe that, but aging is inevitable. Diseases and illnesses are almost inevitable to varying degrees. So all of us have diseases and illnesses. All of us will experience colds and flus. All of us have injuries. All of us will um, uh, get COVID or need to get vaccinations. All of us have needs that may have to maintain our health. And diseases and illnesses are challenges to that maintenance. Recovery from any of the insults and from the uh, entropy and efficiency and inefficiency is subject to chance, largely subject to chance. An example, if you have surgery, uh, you have your appendix out and you go home, what does a surgeon do when you go home? Does a surgeon do anything to help you to be able to heal faster, to heal better, to remove chance? the chance of breakdown, side effects, complications, infections, and so on? The answer, the answer is no. Most of the time, we are left to chance, to our own natural resources. And everybody's got different sort of levels of natural resources. As a result of all this uh, entropy and inefficiency, disability is common. Life happens no matter what. Now, maybe, maybe it's true that most of the people listening here are going to do a lot more to remove chance to make them function optimally, as optimally as they possibly can. But we can't possibly be totally optimal because that's not possible in a living uh, human environment. So anyway, disability is common, unfortunately. Life happens no matter what we do. All the best things that we can do to make us healthy, healthy and optimize performance, life still happens. So. The percentage of people by age group with disability 
15 to 20 percent of the people today in this country have disability, at least one disabling condition. 20 to 25 percent in the 50 year old group, 30 to 40 percent in the 60 year old group, 70 percent, uh, 40 to 50 percent in the 70 year old group. And this is this tends to be cumulative as well. So the 40 year olds with disability continue to carry their disability and accumulate new disabilities as they get older. So the most common causes of disability or the most common disabling conditions in general are arthritis and musculoskeletal disorders, heart disease, mental health disorders, respiratory disorders, and diabetes. All right, so we can consider other functional problems not being able to run down the street as fast as you want to, to be a disability. I don't think it is, but it, it is a limiting factor as well. So what, what, not, what's another contributing factor to disability and disease and not doing well? So iatrogenic illness. Iatrogenic illness is illness caused by what the doctor does to you or what the health professional does to you. So the third leading cause of death in the US in 1999 for more than 120,000 people per year dying of side effects of prescribed medications. The leading cause of death in a 10 year survey of government statistics, adverse reactions to prescription drugs cause more than 300,000 deaths a year. Now though these are older statistics, but it gives you some sense of, of the risks of doing conventional therapies uh, for maintaining your health and decreasing chance. Now in, my, in my, the work that I do, I do consultations with people all the time who present with various conditions and various illnesses, and they want help. They're seeking help from me relative to pulse magnetic field therapy. So this 30-year-old male had anxiety, chronic fatigue syndrome, another word, chronic pain syndrome, depression, erectile dysfunction, fibromyalgia, which leads to CERPS, immune deficiencies, which lead to a lot of these other issues, sinusitis, sleep disturbance, and tinnitus or tinnitus. Had a 30, 70-year-old woman who had diabetes, back pain, neuropathy, restless leg syndrome, sciatica, shoulder problems, sleep disturbance, urinary incontinence, spondylolisthesis, which is a spinal problem, and carpal tunnel. So this, these two people have a lot of different conditions that will need help, can get help, will get help, and adequately so, from post-magnetic field therapy, because all of these conditions um, basically rely on the benefits and effects of magnetic field therapy. So levels of illness. As we develop illnesses, we go through different sort of levels of functioning relative to those illnesses. So it progresses through various stages. Uh, so let's use the cold as an example. Um, at the first stage of the cold, you get what's called an, the energetic stage. You're tired, just tired and achy. At the physiologic stage, your nose is runny and sneezing. At the pathophysiologic stage, that means you're now getting tissue death cell death, organism death, and then you get physiologic reactions to, to what's happening to the infection. So you start coughing and having phlegm. You're producing effects of that damage. At the pathologic stage, when it's moved into a significant damage in the body, then you get pneumonia, you get abscesses, and you can get organ failure. So treatment responses based on these stages, if you treat somebody at the energetic stage, you can remove the, the problem within minutes to hours. At the physiologic stage, it takes longer. Once it's settled into the body, it can take hours to days. Once it becomes pathophysiologic, it takes days to weeks. And once it becomes pathologic, it can take weeks to years or maybe even never. I had a, I told somebody the other day, what, um, how long does it take uh, to recover from a cold if you don't treat it? Seven days. How about if you treat it? A week. I don't think that's completely true, but especially since I've been doing holistic medicine, I know we can have results much better, much faster rather than conventional approaches, which means you still go through these stages of healing and recovery. And then tissues heal at their own rates as well. Corneas can heal in 24 hours, gut cells in 72 hours. So we, we say that gut cells turn over every seven days, but actually they can turn over in 72 hours. Skin, two to four weeks, bone, two plus years. Small nerves, two millimeters a day, repair at the rate of two millimeters a day. Large nerves at the rate of five millimeters a day. The brain, maybe never, and tendons and ligaments and so on take months. So how does magnetic field therapy really help? The number of people who have received substantial clinical benefit from, from uh, application of magnetic fields is certainly in the millions world, worldwide and increasing rapidly as new 
clinical indications or as we discover new uh, uses for PMS. EMF therapies also present as, as alternatives to pharmacologic treatments with virtually no toxicity or side effects. So the use of PMFs is also ra expanding rapidly among professionals. Not as much as we would like, and there's still a, a significant deficit of people using PMF therapy for all sorts of things. But consumers are increasing their use and professionals are increasing their use tremendously. And then who wants to be left behind? I was on the Dr. Oz show because people recommended me to Dr. Oz. And Dr. Oz did a show because um, for pain particularly, but magnetic field therapy clearly was represented as a major uh, benefit for pain. So he did a whole show on PMF therapy for, or at least a segment of his show, PMF therapy for as a cure for pain. And I wouldn't say that it's a cure for pain. It's rather a uh, big claim. But let me show you some examples of how PMFs help. And these are not exhaustive, but there's some examples. So this is a 62-year-old uh, male who had uh, carcinoma of the cancer of the uh, mouth and uh, had radiation therapy. Because of the radiation therapy, the bone dies. Okay, that's dead bone. And then uh, with magnetic field therapy, once magnetic field therapy was begun, that bone was resorbed. The dead bone was actually taken out of the body, was removed by the body. And then with the magnetic field therapy, then you could see a little bridge of bone forming here. That's new bone forming due to magnetic field ther therapy, due to magnetic stimulation. This would have probably not happened with radiation uh, necrosis. Normally it's, it's ir irreversible because the tissues are damaged. They ha don't have the cap capacity or the ability to repair without removing chance, without having some help. This is a diabetic with Charcot foot. So Charcot foot is nerve damage to the foot. Huge swelling. He had a lot of drainage from his foot. And this is, they put a compression around it. So that little pyramid there and the little hole there was where the drainage was coming from. One month of magnetic field therapy, one month, and look at the difference in his foot. Okay, that's with just magnetic field therapy. So it improved the neuropathy and improved the swelling and the infection and the um, swap and the drainage. This is a lady who hit her uh, face on a steering wheel in a car accident, a car rolled over. So she had a through and through laceration, cut right through the lip. She used a small PMF device, portable battery operated, for several hours a day. And then after about two weeks, this is the difference. Almost completely healed. Okay, that's dramatic. You don't get that by chance. Most people cannot do that on their own. They need help. This is another example uh, that really got my attention tremendously about the value of PMF therapy. This is a three-year-old child who, who tore off the end of her thumb. You can see the suture marks. We had the doctors replace the torn off piece of the thumb to serve as a bandage essentially. And then also to uh, be able to uh, uh, vascularize the tissue better faster. So portable PMF device, just like the one with the woman with the uh, laceration to her lip. She did this, this for three, an hour and a half to three hours a day. I would have preferred that she did it for more time than that, but three-year-olds. So after three weeks, about three weeks, you can still see the suture, here are the suture marks. You can still see some of the suture marks. They haven't fallen off yet completely. But this is all gangrene, dry gangrene. So the tissue is dead. It was avascular here, no blood supply. Now it's gangrenous. But it's dry gangrene. It's not, not harmful, not risky. All right, that's at three weeks. At six weeks, look at all the pink. So you can see the healing in here as well. Look at all the pink. Six weeks. There's a little tuft of a scab left at the end in six weeks. And then at about 11 weeks, that little scab fell off. And now she has, is regrowing her nail. So 11 to 12 weeks of magnetic field therapy has regrown, regrown the end of her, of her finger. If the, if the surgeons had done their thing with it, she would have had a stunted thumb for the rest of her life. Dramatic therapy. Now, I did, study, I did a study with um, um, head injuries, TBIs, with PMF therapy, and we used a, a device called a brain gauge to measure uh, uh, performance. <clears throat> this is pretreatment. So this is different functions of the brain using this brain gauge device. Um, the speed of the processing, accuracy, uh, temporal order, in other words, how quickly people make decisions over time, time perception, and so on. So 
green means great. Orange, red is bad. So this is a pale green, which is not great. Yellow, not great. So there are significant deficiency, deficiencies found pre-treatment. This is post-treatment. So after basically a month, I'm sorry, three months of treatment, um, this is what ended up happening. All these greens show up. Significant improvements in function with PEMF therapy. Now, did we heal the brain? I don't know. All right? We don't, we don't know whether it heals the brain, but it certainly helps the brain function better. So this is brain damage improvement or brain function improvement after a TBI, tra tra traumatic brain injury. Vascular improvement. Circulation always improves with PEMF therapy. Almost always, unless you have the uh, circulation completely cut off. So this is a thermogram of somebody before magnetic field therapy with essentially Raynaud's disease with very little circulation to the hands. And this is with PEMF therapy or magnetic field therapy. Okay, so significant in 11 days. Now, the magnetic field therapy is not just for disease. Um, I had a, uh, an athlete I worked with who raced the four deserts. In other words, he raced, the, he raced three of the four deserts on the planet grueling, grueling uh, uh, racing. And he did magnetic field therapy after the first one uh, because he said, I, it really almost destroyed me and a lot of tissue damage as a result. And he needed to prepare for the next one. And he had soreness, muscle aches, uh, dramatically decreased, recovery post-workouts and long runs sped up, recovery sped up after uh, uh, after workouts, using magnetic therapy, muscle fatigue greatly decreased, energy levels increased, personal best training times in 12 hours, 17.3 miles on a bike. So in other words, he improved his, his, uh, his uh, training times significantly. Week, weekly training distances increased, chronic uh, hip and knee pain, little or no discomfort. He then ran the Gobi Desert in his best time ever and made the top 20. In the initial Sahara Desert run, he was down to around the 80th or 90th of a, out of 100. And he used a portable PMF five to seven days a week, four to four hours a day on his gl glutei, uh, thighs, hips, knees, and ankles. And now it's part of his optimal wellness uh, toolbox. I had a 60 year old guy who uh, was a long distance um, cyclist. He had, he's done the trip across the US twice now. So he did 191 miles in 12 hours, 17 miles per hour on, on a bike, 45 minutes faster than the same course before. He put the coils on top of his quads, again, the small um, round coils, riding was easier and faster, felt like it go much longer and harder, and his average speed at 100 miles was the same as earlier, and the ride was hillier. And he said he began to actually outperform 50-year-olds on the, uh, the, the, tour that he, the last tour that he did. So how does magnetic field therapy work? So it does, has all these benefits. It works on all these cells. It helps to decrease um, disability and injury. So how does it actually work? So it's a discovery. And a discovery by definition is at variance with existing knowledge. So a lot of people say, what is this? It's not possible. This can't work. This can't, there's, no, there's no science behind this, which is absolutely not true. And we're going to show you that there is science behind it. But a discovery must, by definition, be at variance with existing knowledge. There's always going to be people who are going to say, no, it can't work. It's not possible. But we will show you that it is possible. And it is at variance with the existing knowledge of the medical system. The medical system doesn't really know about this technology. And when it does know about it, it, it uses it in a very limited fashion because it really doesn't understand the value of it. So PEMFs are a form of energy medicine. They do more than that, but they are a form of energy medicine. The way they work is through energy medicine. It's through ma manipulation and management of energy. So I look at healing in, as basically in, in uh, five levels. Uh, as a person, as a human being, we normally think of ourselves as tissue. Right? We have skin, we have muscles and bones and so on. We think of ourselves as tissue. But what actually makes tissue? What, what actually produces tissue? Molecules which is chemistry. So everything in the body is made of molecules. It's a physical body and therefore it has to have physical structure, which means it needs to have a molecular structure. But what controls chemistry? Physics controls chemistry. 
Chemistry cannot function without physics, and therefore you won't have a body. If you don't have physics, you can't see it, touch it, or feel it, but it's there controlling everything all the time. Now, we can have other uh, discussions about what, what other aspects are above physics, and we can say that certainly we understand that there's quantum physics. Now there's more discussion about quantum physics. And then what's above quantum physics? Well, let's just say for, uh, for, this, for our purposes today, let's just say spirit. And spirit, basically, everything cascades down from the, from the upper levels, right? So even quantum physics and even spirit will cascade down through all these levels. And spirit is energy medicine as well. And um, spirit uh, basically activates quantum physics, which then activates physics, which then activates chemistry and so on. So this is the levels of healing that I tend to look at in terms of where PMF therapy uh, fits in. And so PMF ther therapy basically fits in at the physics level. So one of the four, PEMA therapy or electromagnetics is one of the four forces of the universe. There's the weak force, the strong force, gravitational force, and electromagnetic. And the biggest of all, the largest of all is electromagnetic. It's not necessarily the strongest, but it's the largest. So man, humans are exposed to a huge uh, amount of magnetic field uh, energy all over the place. The Earth's magnetic field is a DC magnetic field. We have magnetic rock formations. We have the Schumann resonances in the atmosphere, the, the pulsations of the uh, electrons in the atmosphere. We have geomagnetic storms through the polar regions. We actually have ground currents. There are currents that are flowing in the ground all the time. We are not aware of them, and this is where grounding could become important and using uh, grounding mats. But that's not all, and that, those are very weak, so they can't do a lot of the work that we need them to do to remove chance from um, the effects on the body of life. And then the body itself produces its own magnetic fields because it's an electromagnetic apparatus. It's a, all this electrical activity in the body produces its own electromagnetic field. And then, of course, we have the magnetic fields of other living beings or other living things, for that matter. So we have a lot of electromagnetic exposure. Not only, not only are we electromagnetic, but we have a lot of exposure around us. So energy is the currency of all interactions in medicine, in nature. Energy is the currency of all interactions in nature are due to uh, relationships of energy. To, lay, to leave energetic considerations out of the equations of life and medicine is to ignore some 99% of what is actually happening around us and within us. There's a lot of science to support alternative medicine. We know that. The body has an energy field and it's important. There are serious flaws in the pill for every disease model. We know that. Inflammation model may replace the disease model. I, I wouldn't say the inflammation model may replace the disease model. In my work and my experience over 50 years of practicing medicine, inflammation has replaced the disease model. The di inflammation is the basis of disease, huge component of the causes of disease. Energetics. Uh, work quickly and without side effects. And this is definitely the future of medicine. Certainly for those that are, have their eyes open. So energy signals are 100 times more efficient and infinitely faster than physical chemical signaling. So oxygen moving into the body to do the things that oxygen does is much slower than the energetics of the way the body works. So for example, when you move your arm, there's, an energy, there's a, a pulse of electromagnetic charge or electrical charge within that muscle that moves at the rate of 100 meters per second. And crazy fast, much faster than chemical signaling. So what kind of signaling would your body's interactive community of 50 trillion cells, whatever number you want to use, prefer? I think I know the answer. Now, we know that living organisms must receive and interpret environmental signals in order to stay alive. We have to react to what, whatever's going on around us, within us, uh, and so on. We have to react to it. And we have to react properly, quickly, efficiently. Survival is directly related to the speed and efficiency of signal transfer. And remember now that electromagnetic energy travels at the rate of 186,000 miles per second, almost instantaneous. And I see this on a routine basis with PMFs. The speed of a chemical reaction is much less, less than one centimeter per second, much slower. So living systems can be affected by many agents in many different ways, but these influences add up to modifications of one basic parameter, 
the density of electrical polarization or electrical uh, charge. Examples of therapies that alter charge density. So too much positive charge it gives you too much acid, too many free radicals, which then leads to disease. So electrical fields, magnetic fields, light, movement therapies. Again, moving ther physical therapies are very important. Hands-on therapies. Again, hands-on healing. And then earthing. One of the most important books that influenced my work is The Body Electric by Dr. Becker. I would strongly suggest you might want to pick that up. It's, it's amazing information about the electromagnetism and foundation of life. And the body is electric. And he shows you lots of evidence about that. Now, in addition to that, we also have magnetite. So not only do we have external magnetic fields, but we have internal magnetic fields that are produced by um, the functions of the body, electrical functions of the body. But also we actually have something called magnetite, which are magnetic antennas in our brains. There are magnetite crystals in the brain. Dr. Kirschfink found that there are about 5 million magnetite crystals per gram of brain cell, brain cell. 100 million magnetite crystals per gram of cerebral cortex. So this is an antenna. It's an electromagnetic wand. It, it produces energy, produces magnetic fields, and it also receives magnetic fields. So this is our telecommunication system through the vibration of uh, other frequencies around us. Very important aspect of who we are and what, how our brains work. And maybe the basis of ESP and other uh, uh, phenomena relative to communication across distance by humans. Now, this is a, this is a study that I did um, with a, a whole body PMF system using something called electroacupuncture according to Vol testing. So electrical testing of points on the hands and on the uh, and feet. And you measure a, a large number of points. And red means, red, red means dead. So red means it's insufficient. Green is good. Yellow means it's compromised, but not, not red. So in this person, the first scan saw a lot of red, tremendous amount of red. Then after a magnetic field treatment to the whole body, look what happened. Only about six or seven bands of red still showed up. I call that shaking the ashes off the embers. So what you've done is reveal the deeper underlying problems in the body. And this is where you had, which should end up targeting your treatment, the reds that are left over. You can waste your time targeting these. So basically you can do a whole body PMF session and just sort of clean out the, the field, the magnetic field of the body, the biofield of the body. And then, then you target the deeper underlying uh, problems that are still there. Same thing in this person, a lot of red and the, the greens are not quite as green looking, but they're greens and, and yellows. And again, after, the after picture. So this person had a lot more going on after being cleared by PMS. The biofield or the body's aura, I'm sure you've all heard of auras. So this, these are pictures done by an aura video station. This is done before PMF therapy, before PMF exposure, and this is after PMF exposure. So the greens and the blues are duller colors. All of this yellow, brightness, shininess, if you will, shows up in the aura after magnetic field therapy. So it's clearing the aura, essentially. And I've actually done dousing of uh, people with after magnetic field therapy and found that their biofield using uh, dousing apparatus expands dramatically by, by 10 or 20 feet even. And I've seen this routinely with healers. When they start doing magnetic field therapy, their own auras, their own biofield for healing purposes dramatically increases. Now, an, an environmental magnetic field or a magnetic field, electromagnetic field applied to the body creates an electrical signal, which then goes to the nervous system and creates a, a bio total biologic response. But that signal keeps going on and creates electrical and hormonal signal. So not only do you have a direct electrical response in the body to the nervous system, but then you also begin to get hormonal signals that then affect the endocrine system, the heart, the blood, and so on. And this is from Dr. Marino. All right, so I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a second. One of the overall mechanisms of action of PMF therapy is on the calcium ion and calcium calmodulin, which is linked to the calcium ion and does most of the work in um, the, the cell, inside the cell. So PMF increases calcium binding to calmodulin in milliseconds. 
And then it increases, develops something called um, uh, NOS. I'm sorry, I'm blocking on this. But anyway, it produces nitric oxide. So, um, so calcium calmodulin fundamentally uh, produces nitric oxides. And that's, that's what's critical. So nit, nit, nitric oxide then produces cyclic GMP, which produces growth factors. So magnetic field therapy then can stimulate angiogenesis in hours over days, collagen production granulation in days, remodeling of tissue through TGF. So t G NO through cyclic GMP then has effects on all of these different um, uh, other proteins and molecules to produce different actions in the body. Sorry for that stumbling. So, so PEMFs that can regulate DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis, alter protein shape and function, control gene regulation, control cell dif division, differentiation, and morphogenesis. Now there's the production of organs and tissues, hormone secretion, nerve growth, and function. So each one of these cellular activities is a fundamental behavior that contributes to the unfolding of life. Bruce Lipton. So the electrical field of the heart is the strongest field in the body because of the amount of function and, and work the heart is doing. The circulatory system is an excellent conductor of electricity. So the heart's electricity gives rise to a biomagnetic field that surrounds the body, all right? That's important. So all the organs in the body do that, but some of the organs are stronger. The, the brain and the, and the heart especially are the most magnetically, electrically active organs in the body. And so they produce the biggest fields around them. And the electrophysiologic correlates of emotions have been measured, electrical, physiological. In other words, the way that the, uh, these emotions react cause the heart to react, which then can be picked up by the heart rate. So this is heart rate, um, rate variability testing. And the heart itself, the electrocardiogram, is associated with a magnetic field. So electrical fields are associated with magnetic fields and vice versa. So this is using a, mag magnet a magnetometer, basically. It's a huge uh, electromagnetic measurement device for the brain. In, th in this case, this woman is using her brain. These have been also developed for the heart and other organs in the body. So the electrocardiogram, this is what happens with the electrical activity, and we're used to the electrocardiogram. But they've actually found that the magnetocardiogram shows a very similar magnetic field uh, uh, process in terms of time, as well as the uh, intensity. In fact, you can actually see that the magnetic field component is maybe just a little bit uh, faster than the electrical component, because the electrical component of the heart has to be translated to the measurement device. But the, the magnetocardiogram picks it up even a bit sooner, actually. All right, two laws of physics are involved in biomagnetism. And Ampere's law, electricity gives rise to magnetism. Faraday's law, magnetism gives rise to, elect, gives rise to electric currents. And we'll talk about those in a second. So the, the, mag, the, bio field of the, uh, the mag, biomagnetic field of the body can be detected as much as 15 feet from the body, but it doesn't even end there. That's just measurable, um, being able to measure it at those levels. And that measurement depends on the tool that you're using to measure. So energy is produced by living systems, electricity, magnetism. So these are, again, these are things that we are, our bodies are producing. Sound, we produce sound, we produce heat, we produce elastic energy and chemical energy. So the breakthrough in energy medicine is the inflammation model. Excess positive charge leads to too much acid. Too many free radicals lead to disease. So inflammation model is an energy medicine model. Virtually all chronic disease is caused by focal, local, focal chronic inflammation. So there's now growing consensus that uh, in the medical community even, that chronic diseases and disorders may actually result from inflammatory responses that have in a sense outlived. So these inflammatory responses have outlived their usefulness and they become instead of acute inflammation, chronic inflammation. And so all these chronic diseases are a result. Magnetic field therapy or magnetic field exposure even helps water. So the water with magnetic field exposure becomes organized. And when it becomes organized, so it takes the disorder, which is normally present in water, and organizes it. And when it organizes it, the uh, structured water, it's called structured water, then passes through membrane channels much faster. And it's closer to the resemblance of the structure of the cell membrane itself. So water is very, very, very uh, much affected by PMFs or magnetic fields. 
So the effects of structured water, antibacterial, cleanses blood of foreign proteins, reduces cholesterol, increases metabolism, promotes soft fragmentation of gallstones. So gallstones can break up. Uh, soft uh, kidney stones can break up as well. It regulates blood pressure, to to improves the tone of the body, stimulates the immune system. Our, only 25 minutes on a medium intensity PMF device structures two liters of water. Food cooked with this water tastes softer and carries the same health value as water alone. Plant seeds, plant seeds grow better and faster. So there's plenty of evidence now to show that the water is very much affected. And that means all the water in our bodies. Now, the water in our body is not truly water. We're basically electrolyte soup. So magnetic field healing then basically is using pulse magnetic fields as an advanced, powerful, safe, integrative, and natural method of healing. So the advantages of magnetic field therapy, are, again, are that it's not toxic, it's not invasive, stimulates the body's own capacity for healing. It's reusable, can be used over and over and over again. Again, it's natural in the sense that it makes the body do the work. You can use it at home, you could use it in a professional setting, and it's complementary to almost all other therapies that I'm aware of. And there's a large body of scientific evidence. So uh, treatment benefits, PMFs act in synergy with most other therapies. They work deep in the body. They do direct tissue healing. I was trained in acupuncture and acupuncture does most of its work through uh, indirectly through the body. And one of the reasons I moved over to PMF therapies from acupuncture is that I can do direct tissue healing. I can do direct cellular healing and still do a lot of the work that acupuncture does. It addresses stubborn problems better faster. And again, it makes everything else work better. Evidence. So in the book, Power Tools for Health, my first book, I um, gave scientific citations for, the, for uh, magnetic field effects on about 50 different health conditions. So there's plenty of evidence. And this is just a, a drop in the bucket of the evidence that's available. Um, it's growing all the time. And so anybody who says there's no evidence, um, I would recommend picking up the book. I had a doctor friend who used to talk to doctors and said, that, show me the evidence. And he would take the book and drop it on the floor. That there's the evidence. And that's the end of the discussion. And then don't ask for evidence anymore. So now we go into the practical stuff. So who am I? So I'm a former family physician. I recently did holistic and functional medicine, trained in acupuncture through a UCLA, UCLA program for, for doctors. I also have training in uh, nutrition, homeopathy, herbal therapies, energy medicine, healing, color therapy, sound therapy, and hypnosis. So I've tried to pick up as much knowledge as I possibly could across the spectrum of non-allopathic medicine in order to be able to solve problems. And everything that I learned solved new problems. But I also discovered that everything I learned still has its own, had its own limitations. So that's why I kept learning and I'm still learning today. So you stop learning, you stop living. So I've been working with magnetic fields now for 30 years. I've written two, three books. Um, so Magnetic Therapy in Eastern Europe, Power Tools for Health, and we'll talk about the next one shortly. And then I've been on too many to count podcasts, interviews, book, and book chapters, and so on. I have uh, two websites, drpollock.com. I actually have multiple websites, but these are the primary ones I recommend to you, drpollock.com and the PMF Training Academy for those who want more in-depth training. So uh, I started all this because I had patients who almost died from gastric bleeding, and I wanted to do something different than traditional ibuprofen or narcotics. And so I did acupuncture training. And then, then when I finished training in 1990, patients were refusing acupuncture. It was un relatively unknown in 1990. So I started looking for alternative ways of doing acupuncture. So I start discovered uh, ma little magnets that they were using in China, Japan, and Korea, choreo hand acupuncture. So I started using all these different kinds of magnets and found benefits beyond the acupuncture point. So then I started looking at the science. Why? Why is this happening? What's happening in the body when you, you do magnetic field therapy? Whether the little magnets or whole body magnetic systems or what, you know, what's going on? So having delved into the science, I met a, a doctor from um, Czech Republic, an MD, PhD, and he provided me with a manuscript of a lot of the uh, citations in the Eastern European literature written in the Cyrillic alphabet, the Russian alphabet. Um, and that book just completely opened my eyes because the amount of research they had done just was way beyond what was available in the West. And that's one of the reasons doctors don't know about this. It's written in obscure journals. It's not written by the mainstream journals. And you don't get into a mainstream journal unless you have a lot of money behind you or your, your prestige 
which is usually because of money behind you, um, is, uh, allows you to get published in uh, Western journals. So I extensively used PMS with better results, and then I published the, this book, Power Tools for Health. Now, this book, Power Tools for Health, is not that practical. It's reasonably practical, but it's not that practical. It does talk more about what magnetic fields are and how they work. And it does talk about, gives you the science on 50 different health conditions. So as a result, I published this book called Supercharge Your Health with PMF Therapy, which is much more of a, of a how-to book. It's more manual, more of a manual. So if you want the science, get this book. If you want more practicality, get this book, although you may need both. So, um, so I appeared on the All Show, we talked about that. So every clinical discipline has its limitations, no matter what. It takes time for any professional to learn the limitations of their discipline, typically five to eight years after you leave school, if you leave your training. Then the question becomes, how do you expand your limiting boundaries? How do you expand beyond the boundaries that you were given by the, the tools of the profession and the knowledge of the profession that you took on? And this usually means going outside the discipline. So we're seeing this with chiropractors all the time. They're now doing functional medicine or they're doing physical therapy. We see this with, uh, again, functional medicine doctors who were conventional medical doctors and they started learning uh, nutrition and started learning other kinds of energetic approaches. So that's what you have to do. You have to leave the house of medicine. You have to leave the traditional path and leave the, 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 the horse you rode in on. You, you have to change horses. And that may be uncomfortable, but in order to really grow as a clinician, in order to be able to help more people, you, you have to expand your boundaries. So the principles of natural medicine, so I took on natural medicine because it, you, we work with the healing power of nature. You try to, as much as possible, treat the cause because if you don't, the problem will, will continue. Clearly try to do nothing to hurt the person from what you're doing. And you should always teach. You should always educate people why you're doing this, why you're doing that, what the differences between the two are or the multiples are. And then let the person that will have to decide for themselves which route they want to take with their healing. And always, always, you're trying to basically treat the whole person. If they come in with a, I say the toe bone is connected to the head bone. You really have to treat the whole person. If you just focus on the elbow and you find out that what they're doing is they're banging their arm on the desk, well, then the answer is not to treat the person. The answer is to stop the banging on the desk, right? So treat the whole person. Put whatever you're doing into context, primarily through the whole person. And so the ultimate goal of natural medicine is the optimization of health. If it's insufficient, you identify the insufficiency and address it. If it's sufficient, you have to maintain sufficiency against entropy because entropy is inevitable. You have to constantly work against entropy. Optimization is add, you're adding continuous uh, their strategies to gain ground on entropy. Entropy is the thermodynamic uh, aspect. Basically, it's the energy in a system that tends to decay over time. Lack of order or predictability, gradual decline into disorder. And that's what aging and disease is. So all biologic systems are, are subject to various degrees of entropy. It's inevitable and it accelerates logarithmically with aging. So not only does entropy contribute to aging, but it's logarithmically advancing with aging. So the ultimate goal of health, of healing, is to optimize health and then add strategies to gain ground on entropy. Part of the aspect of entropy is energy, isn't it? So what is the basic currency of energy in the body? ATP. So the most important goal is to keep up the energy in a system, which is ATP. Keeping up the energy is to create sufficient ATP. And that's a mighty big task. So the majority of ATP in the body is recycled from ADP and back again. ATP by, whoops, ATP by itself does nothing. It's just sitting there as a, re, as a resource. You have to strip off one of the phosphates called hydrolysis to create ATP, ADP. That stripping off of one of the phosphates then releases energy, and that's the energy of the cell. All right, so at any given moment, the total amount of ATP and ADP remain constant. The energy used by human cells requires the hydrolysis of 100 to 150 moles of ATP a day, which is about 50 to 75 kilograms of ATP per day in the body. We re replenish our body weight every day in ATP, right? Each equivalent of ATP is recycled. Each ATP molecule is recycled about 500 to 750 times in a day. We're constantly making it. Every heartbeat requires a new batch of ATP for the next heartbeat. 
So PEMFs produce, maintain, and restore ATP, keeping the cycle going optimally. So one study found that even 20 minutes of PEMF therapy increases ATP by an average of 100%, and even go, goes up to about 600% improvement in ATP production. And that's all, unfortunately, very local in, in what happens. In order to do ATP across the body, you need a whole body PEMF system. And you need a strong enough PEMF system to reach deep through the body uh, to be able to do all that. And you'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But PEMFs don't work enough by themselves. To build a house, you need bricks and mortar. You need the workers. You need plans. You need tools. You need either use hand tools or you can use power tools. And if you're going to use power tools, you need power. So in the body, what you do is you need nutrients. You need functional cells. You need functional genetics. You need fuel and energy. You need natural versus and, or stimulated energy. Natural energy is allowing your body to produce the energy that it needs. And we already know that the body is only about 25% efficient. So as a result, we can always, always increase the amount of uh, efficiency of the body. And magnetic fields do that. So if you do it naturally, it leaves things to chance. If you stimulate it with PEMFs or other energetic approaches, you're removing chance. You're increasing the odds of being able to solve the problem rather than leaving it to chance. So what do PEMFs do? So I mentioned that we basically are working from the level of physics down, physics through chemistry and down into tissue. PEMFs probably also do stuff at the quantum physics level. And ultimately, I would have to say that electromagnetic fields and magnetic fields in general, even for those for uh, physical use and, health and healing, are ultimately derived from the spirit level or the universal energy, if you will. So how do PEMFs actually act? It's the magnetic field passing into the body from the magnetic coil. As it passes into the body, it stimulates the body to produce charge. So it interacts with the membranes of cells to create currents, electrical currents. So the, the tissues, so the elect, so the um, ions in the body and the tissues, the electrolytes in the tissues, the water in the tissues, all of these things end up creating these electrical currents. And those currents that act on cell membranes. And when they act on the cell membranes, then they increase cellular respiration. They act on calcium, as we talked about. They act on coagulation to improve circulation. They re relax muscles. So the muscles can flow, produce uh, better circulation by relaxing and opening up and dilating. And they have strong immunomodulation effects by acting on heat shock proteins, on SOD, on uh, um, uh, free radicals. So all of these actions on the membranes of the PMFs then create anti-inflammatory actions, healing acceleration, improvements in perfusion, anti-edema activity, pain killing, a natural pain killing effect, not only by reducing inflammation, but actually a natural pain killing effect on the nervous system and nerves, and then reducing muscle contractions or spasticity. All of these actions have been identified in that initial book, Magnetic Therapy in Eastern Europe. So they were identified over the past 30 years or 50 years in Eastern Europe. Now, Whatever happens at the cellular level cascades up to the membrane level and then goes into the nervous system. And I mentioned, I had a slide earlier that showed you then goes to the pituitary gland and through the rest of the brain and then creates all of these actions throughout the body. So you increase TSH production, you increase ACTH production, you do vagal nerve stimulation and, and you get, again, systemically, you get anti-inflammatory action, healing, acceleration, perfusion, et cetera. So all those same effects that happen locally now cascade to varying degrees through the rest of the body. The local action is going to produce the strongest reaction. And then secondarily, you get other reactions through the rest of the organism, but they're much weaker as they proceed away from the local area. So we talked about cells and so how and the cell membrane and how PMFs affect the cell membrane. When a cell is injured, whether it's heat or, or cold or radiation or viruses or toxicities, no matter what the cause of the injury of the cell is, an injured cell doesn't work properly, and it decreases ATP production, causes has micro, mi mitochondrial damage. In other words, it can't produce as much energy, which therefore means it can't produce as much ATP. It changes the, uh, the uh, um, entry of calcium into cells. It increases reactive oxygen species. It creates membrane damage by itself. That action, the cell injury, creates membrane damage, which then, again, decreases the ability of the cell to function causes protein misfolding, which then causes all kinds of problems with the genetics and increases the activity of uh, the death of the cell. So cell injury 
happens at a level where it's reversible, which is at a level that's unseen, right? These are biochemical processes or through ultra microscopic processes or uh, measure, using electrical measurements, using electromagnetic measurements, et cetera. Once the injury, once the cell has stopped being able to uh, maintain itself, once it gets past the point of, of uh, essentially not being able to repair itself, that's re irreversible cell injury. And we see that basically either through biochemical changes in the blood that we measured, through ultra microscopic changes, in other words, high, po high potency, high uh, resolution microscopes, through m regular microscopes. And then eventually we can see it. So there's a progression then of the amount of damage over, over time of the injury process to get to a point where we as humans before biochemistry and before EKGs and so on, and X-rays and imaging studies, we're able to see it. So if we waited this long, then it's way too irreversible to be able to recover and repair. So the, the goal then is to try to improve cell function while it's still reversible, while it's still able to fix itself. And routine magnetic field therapy will do that to you. If you're doing magnetic field therapy every single day, you're giving yourself a much better chance of helping cells that you don't even know are having problems be able to maintain their homeostasis. Let's go back to this slide again. These are all the different things that magnetic field acting energetically on the energy systems of the body and the cells of the body. These are all the things that magnetic fields do and many more. So this is a small smattering of the things that happen in the body. And you know, I've become humble over the years and working with PMFs. I can't predict what's gonna happen. The body decides what's gonna happen. But if I give the body the chance, then the body hopefully will make the right decisions and be able to uh, heal itself, recover itself. So these are the very basic actions. Uh, improving dilatation of blood vessels, reducing swelling, anti-inflammatory, pain killing, muscle relaxing, uh, healing acceleration, the, the thumb that I showed you, um, anticoagulant effects, so that again, improves circulation and decreases clotting and um, breakdown of tissues so that you don't get what we call hypoxic damage or ischemic damage, reducing bruising, acupuncture stimulation. So every time you're doing magnetic field therapy, you're stimulating all the acupuncture points and, merid and meridians in the area of the magnetic field. If you're doing whole body stimulation, you're doing whole body magnetic field therapy. It's not as accurate, may not be quite as potent as acupuncture, but you're still getting all of those acupuncture benefits. And then entrainment means that you're starting to get the, the nervous system to basically work in conjunction with the resonance of the magnetic field. So, and on top of all this, PMS stimulates stem cells. They increase uh, neural stem cells by about 400%. They increase about 150 growth factors. Part of the healing process when you're dealing with damaged tissues is you have to stimulate stem cells to be able to repair and replace that tissue. Okay, and we mentioned water already. So where there's charge or electrical conductivity, there is magnetic field action. According to the laws of physics, Faraday's law, the two aspects are inseparable, electrical and magnetic. And PEMFs work deeper than most other energy healing technology in the body. So what is an electromagnetic wave? So you have an electrical field here, which basically is vertical. And then you have a horizontal magnetic field, which is uh, perpendicular to the electrical field. So wherever you have an electrical field, you automatically always have a magnetic field. So how does that look going, uh, practically speaking? So as the magnetic field moves down a wire, it produces a electrical field, which at the same time simultaneously produces a perpendicular magnetic field. Watch this part of this slide it's at the back end here. You can see as the, and they rise proportionally. So as the electrical field increases, the magnetic field increases. As it goes away, the magnetic field goes away. So this is a continual process of production of magnetic fields by current flowing through a wire. All right, so PEMFs are like the wind in the trees. You can't see it, but you know it's there by virtue of its actions. The body's transparent to a low frequency or a direct current magnetic field. So in other words, a static or permanent magnetic field. Nothing in the body stops, slows, or uses up a magnetic field, nothing. It goes right through the body like the wind in the trees, just keeps on going, right? It stimulates the tree, but it just keeps on going. A PMS passed through the body as if the body wasn't even there. 
So a critical aspect of PMF therapy is intensity, the intensity of the magnetic field. And that's based on Faraday's law. Time varying, in other words, magnetic fields that are in motion, induce an electrical field whose charge, the magnitude of that electric field, the intensity of that magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field is proportional to its rate of change. So the rate of change of the magnetic field creates an increase in the rate of change of the electric field. In other words, the energy that's produced in the body. And that is based on this formula called dB slash dt. So dB is, is the intensity of the magnetic field. This is the magnetic field at zero. There's no magnetic field. And then it increases over time, right? So it goes up from, a, from zero to a peak. That's the increase in the magnetic field. And it does that over time. It can't do it simultaneously. It, happen, it has to happen over time. So then you do a calculation then based on, the, on this, the change in intensity over the change in time, which gives you the strength of the production of charge in the body. This is a sample coil from a PMF-120. It produces a very powerful magnetic field extremely rapidly. And then because of the engineering, that magnetic field decays very rapidly over time. In microseconds, this is all happening in microseconds, extremely fast. This is a typical uh, a sine wave magnetic field. The magnetic field produced by power lines is a sine wave. Magnetic fields produced by devices that plug into the wall and then don't filter or change the magnetic, change the current, it's translated into a magnetic field by driving it into coils, then that's a sine wave. And you can change any of these to produce the kind of intensity of the magnetic field, in other words, the dB slash dt that you want. Now, I get into arguments all the time with people about frequency versus intensity, resonance and magnetic fields. Resonance is important, frequency is important. But most of the research to date has not compared the combinations of frequency and intensity to make any definitive conclusions on what the best parameters are for any PEMF use. We don't know what these are. So most of the research has actually shown that most of the benefits in the body are coming from the intensity of the magnetic field. And I'll show you why in a second. The term frequency is usually misused. For PEMFs, the proper term should be pulse rate, pulses per second because most PMF signals are not continuous. So like a sine wave that I showed you before, this is a continuous wave. This is a pulse wave. So you, you produce these pulses periodically, okay? So we shouldn't be using the word frequency anyway, and that gets confusing to everybody because people are using it all the time and they shouldn't be, it should be pulse rate. So PMFs are not continuous and they are not broadcast into the environment like microwaves are, or radar is, or, or uh, radio signals, or TV signals. They are broadcast. They are continuous waves broadcast into the environment. Now, again, one of the reasons PMF work, PMFs work in the body so well is because they act on the water in the body. And the water in the body is not actually water. It's an electrolyte soup. And virtually every molecule in the body has charge. Again, we're electromagnetic. We're an electrical beings that are producing charge and electricity and electromagnetic fields all the time. So the motion of the ions induce and conduct charge. Just the motion of the ions in our body induce and conduct charge. And PMFs interact with natural charge existing throughout the whole body, the whole body. No part of the body can't be affected by PMFs. So PMFs can stimulate the body to produce the amount of um, charge, healing, and other actions only to the extent it is capable it can't be overcharged. This can happen with East Tim. So magnetic fields drop off very rapidly with, with distance away from the source, extremely rapidly. And you have to account for that with healing purposes, for healing purposes. Uh, 15 Gauss is the magnetic field intensity needed typically to help the body fight in inflammation through the adenosine receptor. And you, again, you have to calculate the dose of the magnetic field you need to, to operate deeper into the body. So for example, if you want to treat at two inches into the body, and you need 15 Gauss or 1.5 millitesla, you're gonna need 500 Gauss to deliver 15 at two inches. At four inches into the body, let's say across, well, part, partly through the brain, you're gonna need almost 2000 Gauss, okay? And the problem that most people have with PMF therapy today is they don't know what the intensity is. And unfortunately, the people selling you the PMF system, they don't know what it is, or they don't wanna talk about it because they, they wanna confuse you with frequency versus intensity and their device can't produce intensity. So let's talk about frequency because that's what I know and what, what I can tell you, All right? Research has definitely showed that magnetic field intensity makes a difference. So this is a placebo, this is uh, steroids 
for inflammation in, the, in a rat foot, a mouse foot paw. And this is a high intensity magnetic field. So the intensity of the magnetic field makes a difference in terms of how well it deals with inflammation. Timeline for healing. So in order to know how to heal or how well you're gonna heal, you have to understand the tissue you have and the level of illness or disease you have. And then you ha have, will have some sense of how long it's gonna take uh, for the tissue to heal. You get, need the best equipment to get the best results. You need the right equipment to get the best results. And you need to use it right to get the best results. So not only do you need the best equipment, you need to know how to use it and you have to use it right in order to get the best results. And if you compromise on any of those, then you're gonna compromise on your results. So now that you see what PMFs are, how they work, and the intensity is critical for good results and the body's responsiveness at, through every cell in the body, the PMF therapy, then what kind of magnetic field therapy sh system should you get? You should definitely probably not get anything less than 15 docs for sure. Most of the whole body PMF systems, particularly the ones that are sold through multi-level marketing, are one gauss or less. So what benefits are you getting? Probably shouldn't even get it less than 60 gauss. So 60 gauss is only gonna give you a benefit, 15 gauss benefit at half an inch into the body. All right, so intensity becomes really important. So too many people, including practitioners, are heavily marketed devices that are poorly, by poorly educated salespeople. And these devices have little clinical versus perceived value. They have, they have a sense of value, but they have very little clinical value and therefore leave much more to chance. And you're probably in the long run, not gonna get a whole lot more, a lot of benefit from it. Inadequate results lead to unhappy and, uh, people and ultimately sicker people for the time spent using something that's not gonna work. So conflicting information, many confusing choices. Remember intensity matters. So the uh, important device purchasing question is value. The value equals the cost and the benefit that you want, expect, and need. So you need to think about, is it portable? How much space is it gonna take? Uh, do you have adequate support, technical and, and professional? What is the warranty service? Not only what is the warranty, but what is the service? Where do you get your warranty service? Do you have to ship the device to some other foreign country? Is there financing? What kind of financing is available? Customer service, how good is the customer service? Uh, do they sell you something and they walk away and then you're left on your own? The, the fact that, that you need to have uh, multiple choices. You have to have more than one choice. If you buy one system, you're typically not gonna buy any other system because you're making a fairly significant investment. Do you have adequate training? And is there credibility behind the, the device and the people who are selling the, the equipment? This uh, table is in my uh, Supercharger Health book. These are the different devices and they can be categorized by whether they're low, medium, or high, or very high intensity locally for local use. And most whole body systems have a, an applicator that can be used locally, but they're usually much uh, lower intensity than uh, specifically dedicated devices for local use. And then you can use whole body systems that again, will tend to produce uh, stronger magnetic fields um, in the whole body, which give you a lot more benefit. This is a picture of, all the different devices that are available on drpollock.com. And we'll get into that in a second. All right, so you have a lot of choices to, to, uh, from which to make a selection. And again, it's a very important to make the right selection because you're probably only gonna make one investment. And I routinely get people coming to me who made the wrong investment and now they're sorry and they need to make an, a, an even bigger investment to uh, be able to deal with the problems they have because they weren't being helped by the device they bought before. So I would rec for, Jack, for um, advice, you can go to drpollock.com. In particular, I have something called the buyer's guide. So do in the search box, just put in buyer's guide uh, or maybe on the right side in the uh, uh, information. Also, there's a product comparison chart, which is the one I just showed you above. And that if you go to drpollock.com and then landing pages, product comparison. So or you just go to the, a product comparison on the website and then uh, consult. So then to consider, uh, we talked about this ease of use. To get informed, these are the books, Supercharge Your Health, Power Tools for Health. You can go to info.drpollock.com to get more information. And I have reached the end of the um, chat, slide, conference, presentation. Thank you for joining us. And now we are open to questions. <laughs>